I want to talk to you about a dress that I've admired since I first saw it over 20 years ago and today I finally get to own. Okay, so I don't own the actual gown, I'm not that rich and I'd be terrified to wear it, <laughs> but I can confidently say that I own the best reproduction of it in existence as of today, October whatever, 2021. The dress I'm talking about is none other than the black and white ball gown worn by Audrey Hepburn in the 1954 film Sabrina. Before I go into the story of my own Sabrina gown, I'd like to give you a little history on the original dress. This dress has been the subject of a little controversy over the years with both Edith Head and Hubert de Givenchy claiming credit for it. So let me set the scene for you. In 1953, Audrey had been cast to play Sabrina Fairchild, and she requested of the director that she be allowed to wear real Parisian dresses for Sabrina's return from Paris. He agreed to this request, and that is where our story begins. Audrey went to Paris and purchased some dresses from Givenchy for the film. However, costume designer Edith Head was given full credit for the film's costumes at the Academy Awards when she accepted the award for best costume design. The dress disappeared at some point, but resurfaced in 2017. The dress resurfaced as a part of Debbie Reynolds' collection, and it had been hidden away in a trunk on her 44-acre ranch in California. An inspection of it led the discoverers to conclude that it actually had been made at Paramount, which would have confirmed Edith Head's original claims. Quoting from the Hollywood Reporter article, I'm going to look down and read this now. Did she bring actual clothes from Givenchy or did she bring sketches? Uh, Madalena asks. I'm in Edith Head's camp on this. I can see her looking at Givenchy's sketches and saying, okay, and then creating her own interpretation. His argument is bolstered, Madalena says, by an examination of the dress. A couture dress is completely finished on the inside, he reasons. Studio-created costumes are unfinished inside, so a costumer can quickly open and close them if needed on set. This dress is unfinished inside, and it's been stamped by Paramount's wardrobe department. According to one article online, those who had worked in the wardrobe department at Paramount Pictures in the mid-1950s agreed that the three Parisian looks in Sabrina were indeed Givenchy's, noting that the designs had been crafted within the department which was a common practice as multiple copies are typically produced to account for wear or possible damage, but had been created using Givenchy's sketches. In Edith Head's 1959 book, The Dress Doctor, she said that, the director broke my heart by suggesting that while the chauffeur's daughter was in Paris, she actually buy a Paris suit. I had to console myself with the dress whose boat neckline was tied on each shoulder, widely known and copied as the Sabrina neckline, but she made no mention of the gown. However, in a 1974 interview, Edith claimed of the gown that the drawing Audrey presented was of a solid color, supposedly satin, and not embroidered. I never received a thing from Givenchy. My sketch artist did all the final renderings and the patterns were made at Paramount. The wool for her suit, the silk taffeta, the embroidered aganza, and all the other fabrics used came from local fabric dealers. In the same interview, she pulled out a crumpled and sagging black dress from a rack, saying of it that it was the muslin, which is the first fitting dress uh, uh, of the, the black boat neck dress we're talking about here, not the, not the gown, although it's made in rayon taffeta. See the peplum here? I did away with it when I finalized its look. It was a nice enough design originally, but looked even more spectacular when I did away with this awful one-sided peplum and added the bows. But then her story changes. Later, when speaking to another author who had credited the designs to her in his books, uh, she later said, I lied. So what? If I bought a sweater at Bullock's Wilshire, do I have to give them credit to? So that one, I don't know if she's referring to the boat neck dress or the gown or all of it, but she admitted to lying. Edith did, however, already have a reputation for stretching the truth, so it's not much of a surprise. According to costume designer David, I can't pronounce his last name, <laughs> uh, Chirichetti, 
I think. Edith was criticized by other designers for copying things rather than coming up with ideas of her own. She had a lot of ideas of her own, but because of the volume of work that she had, she relied a lot on her sketch artists. She would say to her sketch artists, give me some colors for a woman's blouse. And the sketch artists would make up a whole bunch of sketches and Edith would look at them and maybe find one or two that were interesting and incorporate them into the next sketch that was done for the whole outfit. So it wasn't out of character for Edith to stretch the truth and she wasn't really known for her originality. So it's looking like it was completely designed and made by Hubert de Givenchy. But let's look at the evidence that backs that up. So I'm going to read from some memos that I found at the Margaret Herrick Library in Beverly Hills regarding her shopping trip for these Parisian dresses. June 5th, 1953, um, Don Hartman called me to his office yesterday. Billy Wilder had discussed advisability of buying a few clothes for Hepburn in Paris. Hartman asked my reaction. Wilder had asked for a particularly French looking suit, which would look as though it came from a French tailor. And as much as we do not employ a permanent tailor and the tailoring we have done is strictly American type work, I do not think I could duplicate exactly what a Parisian couturier could do. Wilder okayed my telling her to get a suit, two very extreme French hats, and a couple of either blouses or neck pieces so the same suit could be worn with different accessories. He also suggested she get a typically European spectator sports outfit. Head, Wilder, and Hepburn have discussed the fact that Hepburn wishes to play the picture black and white, whether black and white or color photography is used. Head advised Hepburn to stay away from dead black, go instead to navy blues or any other dark color, and stay away from dead whites. June 5th, 1953, dear Russ. Um, <laughs> here's the information concerning Audrey Hepburn's wardrobe. Some weeks ago, Don Hartman and Billy Wilder, in discussing this picture, thought it would be very advantageous to ask Miss Hepburn when she was passing through Paris to purchase certain items of wardrobe for use in the picture. They discussed this with Hepburn, and a few days later, Edith Head went to San Francisco and finalized it with her. I rechecked the requirements today, and here is what we would like to arrange for her to purchase. One, a dark suit. This should be of the type she would wear crossing the Atlantic by plane and arriving upstate New York by train. Several blouses, uh, gillets, sorry, I didn't look that up and I'm not pronouncing that right, probably. Gillet, gillet, I'm not sure what that is. Or fronts to be used with the suit. Two, extreme French hats appropriate for the suit. Three, very smart French day dress. The above should be bought as Hepburn's private wardrobe and in no way should Paramount's name be used as it might involve screen credit, duty coming into the country, as well as possible hold up bringing it in. It should come into the country as Hepburn's own personal wardrobe. After selections have been made, we would need to have sent ahead of time sketches of the items as well as sample colors and fabrics. Hepburn has been requested not to select dead black or dead white. We would suggest dark blue or oxford or charcoal gray. She should not purchase any accessories such as bags, gloves, or shoes. I'm sure that Mrs. Uh, Disson something would be most helpful in shopping with Hepburn. Would you please transmit this information to Dick Meeland and if our understanding is correct, ask him to go ahead and authorize the purchases, charging them to SF89020 Sabrina Fair. But if he finds that Hepburn is expecting reimbursement for traveling to Paris, hotel accommodations, etc., please have him contact us immediately before proceeding. It should be mentioned that the story time of the year for the use of the suit is the first week in June. June 27th. Uh, we would like Mrs. Desigonzac to make tentative selections for Hepburn per my letter to you dated June 5th. The selections should be made at Balenciaga's. When Hepburn goes through on July 13th, she should complete the selections or choose new clothes from the same place. Edith Head and Hepburn discuss the fact that after Hepburn has tried on the model or type of clothes that will be selected for the picture, she will on the spot with Mrs. Mrs. D's help, <laughs> change the color of the model and possibly the material, as well as perhaps altering collars and cuffs, all to the end that we do not wind up with clothes that would be exactly like the model, as the model itself could very easily be turned over to an American manufacturer for making and distribution of reproductions in America. In other words, we do not want to select clothes from the latest Paris collections to use as is. Obviously, we cannot afford to give any screen credit and the clothes as selected and modified by Hepburn should be under the guise of her own wardrobe without reference to Paramount. 
P.S. After the clothes have been ordered, we would like to receive samples of the material as well as a sketch showing the design. July 7th, Balenciaga cannot provide Audrey Hepburn wardrobe in time due pressure work preparing autumn collections. Best alternative is top couturier Givenchy who can arrange, send completed wardrobe to America on own responsibility by August 10th. Air mailing sketches and samples Wednesday direct Edith Head. We'll cable later today regarding prices, but wish soon as possible approval Givenchy arrangements. Audrey asked loan approximately 200,000 francs to be repaid New York. Please authorize as soon as possible if okay. Assume this particular Hepburn advance, which about $500 would be personal to be paid America in dollars by check or by salary withholding. Advise if all above okay. And then a cable later that day. Sabrina Fair following our Givenchy's prices for Hepburn wardrobe, traveling dress francs 150,000, afternoon dress francs 120,000, two hats 15,000 each. We'll advise on blouses tomorrow. Audrey says wardrobe exactly what she wants. Please advise soon as possible as she having first fitting Thursday 9th, then flies Nice, returning Monday 13th London, Stopping Paris for second fitting, Givenchy models exclusive to Audrey and no credit required. Figure francs at 390 to the dollar. On July 23rd, Sabrina Fair Hepburn wardrobe will be ready Paris July 24th. Total cost will be under authorized 300,000 francs. Sketches and samples are en route here from Paris. So she had chosen some dresses and went for fittings. And while they were being made, some sketches and samples were sent to Hollywood. A month later, there was another wire uh, for the night wire. On August 14th, Sabrina Fair, Billy Wilder, and Edith Head agree with Audrey Hepburn on Givenchy dress. Please purchase in Paris for $560. It's that last little wire later in August that I believe refers to the ball gown. And my theory on this is that they had wanted to make it in-house based on his sketches, but had some kind of issue that made Audrey insist on purchasing the gown directly from Givenchy and uh, they eventually caved and purchased it. That's just my theory. I haven't been able to find a full catalog of Givenchy's first collection that she would have chosen this gown from. However, there's at least one photograph of model Bettina Graziani, probably not pronouncing that right, wearing the gown and I believe this was pre-Sabrina because Audrey was in possession of the dress after the film. There is another picture I have seen of a model in the Sabrina gown with the original black bodice and I know I would have saved that picture and I have been looking everywhere on my computer and my hard drive and the internet trying to find it again and I can't and I know I'm not crazy I know I saw this picture but it is nowhere to be found so I decided to recreate it for you and this is this is what the original looked like or I think roughly <laughs> I just wrapped black fabric around the top According to Givenchy in a 2018 interview, he stated that we just changed the top of the evening dress when she dances with William Holden in the tennis court from black jersey to a white organza bustier since it was for a summer ball. So since I can't find this picture, this is what you get. I do know I am not completely crazy and pictures of the dress with its original black top do exist because I know someone who has pictures of it with the original black top. However, he is saving them for a future publication, so um, I, I have nothing to show. <laughs> I have nothing to show you here. Couldn't, couldn't find the one I had on the computer, and so I yeah, did that. So in this probable timeline, Audrey must have tried on the dress on her shopping trip in Paris, however, didn't purchase it. They probably wanted to do it in-house, for some reason couldn't, and then the decision was finally made to just purchase the dress and alter the top. 
This seems to be the most likely chain of events, however, it still leaves me with some questions. Number one, if this dress was part of Givenchy's collection, was there ever more than one? Uh, why have we not seen other examples of it floating around? Did, did he only make one and then give it to Audrey and never make any others? Especially it being such a popular movie, I think. Would he not have sold other, other copies of it? Um, I've never seen anyone else wearing one. Uh, did he give Audrey his one and only version of this dress and never create any more? Two, if Givenchy designed and made this dress, why are the modern recreations overseen by Givenchy so inaccurate when compared to the version used in the film? If I can have it recreated as closely as I can on my budget, surely Givenchy could have replicated it like nearly perfectly because he designed and made the original but that doesn't seem to be the case there is a replica on display in Paris or at least there was a couple years ago in the Givenchy Atelier uh, that I have seen with my own eyes and and it is a very poor reproduction of the original it, it's um why would he have designed it so differently and then put it on display too? Um, it's, it's made of some kind of satin material. It has no floof. That is a technical term, floof, no floof. Uh, it's just, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah. So when Edith had mentioned at that one point that the sketches she had seen of the dress indicated that it was made of a uh, satin, I kind of wondered because this new version made by Givenchy for sure and on display is made of a satin. Um, it is also embroidered. I don't know. The whole thing confuses me. I don't get it. Three. That's not three. Three. Normally for films, more than one copy of each costume is made in the event that something happens to one during filming. You want to have backups. Um, were there other backups made of this gown? And um, were they made by Paramount uh, or Givenchy? Uh, and if so, where are they? Was there only one made? And they had to be very careful not to rip it while she's climbing up this, uh, um, what is that, the little chair, the you can tell I don't play tennis. So it sounded like all of the original wardrobe was given to Audrey later, but were, were there doubles? Did she get the doubles? Were they left behind? Were there no doubles? I'm not very clear on that. Were there only doubles of the other dresses? Was this one too complex? Was the one found in storage? A duplicate made by Paramount and stamped on the inside by Paramount and there was another one? Questions, questions. And my last question, what about those who were working in the wardrobe department at Paramount that apparently at some point were contacted or interviewed, although I, you know, there were no names, I can't reach out and ask them myself, but they supposedly remembered recreating dresses from Givenchy's designs. Uh, which dresses were these? Was the black and white gown one of them? And yeah, who were these people? And what exactly do they remember? Although I'm fairly certain that it was his work and uh, the dresses came from his atelier, I, those questions still bother me. And if you have any answers, please let me know because I spent too much time on this. So now, after that history lesson, let me tell you about my dress. I never really thought I would own a replica of the Sabrina gown, but when I saw a company called Liz Dress posting pictures of one they had made for a customer, um, made out of satin, usually, usually the reproductions that I stumble across online are made of satin, not sure why, um, but I saw that on Instagram and thought, 
what can it hurt? I'm going to reach out and see if they think it's possible to make it out of organza or organdy um, like the original. I've read resources that say it was made of organdy and some others say it was organza. So I, not really knowing the difference, did as much research as I could and settled on organdy. So mine is made of silk organdy and it looks fabulous. I reached out to the company in about March 2020, uh, the beginning of the lockdowns, um, when I thought I still had a chance of wearing the gown to the Cannes Film Festival since I was living in Cannes. <laughs> so we discussed the dress and I sent over pictures and videos that I had taken of the actual dress, which I had gone to see in 2017 before it was auctioned off. I also had the forethought at the time to take some measurements so I gave them measurements as well, so we could get that right. I had taken measurements of the skirt length, the bodice length, the bust, the waist, uh, the length of the overskirt, and the width of the um, ruffles along the bottom. So all of that information went into creating my personal gown. Yes, I am looking down at my notes here <laughs> so I don't forget anything. Um, the only measurement that really needed adjusting for me was the waist. I'm a couple inches off from her waist measurement, so. And I think my skirt might have ended up slightly longer than Audrey's in, in the front, but the overskirt looks about right. I, I haven't measured everything to see if all the measurements are, are accurate. It looks really nice and it fits, so that's what's most important. But we did base it on the actual measurements of the actual dress. With this information, they got to work. Originally, we had planned to just screen print on the organdy for this budget Givenchy. However, it turns out that was not possible um, to screen print on the organdy material and they decided to send it off to be embroidered, which is fine with me. <laughs> That's even better. Um, the, the process was delayed because of that and probably some COVID related situations that I'm not aware of, but um, by December, <laughs> they'd finally sent me the gown. However, the hips were too narrow and I couldn't get into it. They told me they'd already begun working on another version, experimenting with using one piece of fabric for the whole skirt rather than uh, like front and back pieces. So while I waited for that to arrive, I decided to make an alteration to the overskirt, which fit because it's the overskirt. They had chosen to line the inside with like a white satiny material and and to use the same kind of material in black for the ruffle around the bottom. I wasn't a fan of that. I wanted it as screen accurate as possible, which calls for the entire inside of the overskirt to be uh, a black um, taffeta. So I couldn't afford taffeta. And I, I went online and found some faux taffeta um some kind of polyester i don't know a faux taffeta and i bought 12 meters of it or 12 yards i don't remember a lot i bought a lot of it and um, my local seamstress used nearly all of it to redo the inside to replace the lining and the ruffles so i am left with a couple scraps of this faux taffeta there's a lot of material in the skirt. Soon after that alteration was done, the new version of the dress arrived and thank goodness it fit. So last thing left to do were the finishing touches, which were hundreds of tiny little clusters of cotton thread balls sewn all over the dress in specific places on the flowers. Liz Dress had sent me some trim that worked really well if I like rolled it up and, and, and sewed them together. However, there wasn't enough. <laughs> so I needed to make, uh, I think it was something like 300, nearly 300 of these thread balls. 
and I could only make a hundred out of the trim I had before I ran out. So at first I tried purchasing something online in Europe so it would come faster without uh, extra duties or anything and uh, it didn't match and it didn't look right at all. It was very flat and off white and is still sitting there in a bag somewhere because I can't use it. Um, so then I went back to Liz's dress and said, can you just send me more of the same thing, please? So they did, however, however, it was the wrong trim. Um, they said they had no more of the original trim. They had ordered it from a company. The company had sent it to me, I guess. And it just, it wasn't right <laughs> again. And, and I couldn't get the same little cotton ball trim. So for my final attempt, I went on to AliExpress and bought yet another trim after asking questions and getting pictures and measurements and crossing my fingers and praying. It again did not match, but it was, it was doable and it would have to do. So I, by this time it was August, 2021. And uh, I started over again, making these little thread balls with the new, with the new uh, trim. And as making, as I was making them, I, I was given the opportunity to have access to a really nice tennis court, like the next week. So, um, <laughs> this tennis court was in France. We were going there for a, a little family vacation and I spent an entire seven hour car ride sitting there making these little, little cotton clusters. And, um, and then an entire day after I got there, I spent making these little cotton ball clusters and sewing them onto the skirt all day into the night. I think I ended at like 1 a.m., finally got the last one sewed on and um, the dress was done. <laughs> the dress was finally complete and I could kick back and relax and enjoy the rest of the vacation and have a perfect photo shoot with this dress on a tennis court just like I wanted. So, oh, it was quite a process. I am so thrilled to own this dress. I never thought I would actually own <laughs> the Sabrina gown. A little, a little black dress? Yes. Um, a giant cloud of over 20 meters of, of uh, embroidered organdy and taffeta? No. It's kind of taking up a lot of space in the closet. <laughs> but it's worth it. Even though I have spent far more personal hours working on other dresses and costumes, like sewing things by hand, I'm, I'm really quite proud of this one. Uh, and that's why I've given it its very own incredibly long video, <laughs> uh, which is now coming to an end. I'm going to leave you with this, my little video tribute to my Sabrina dress. Thank you for watching my video. I appreciate it so much. I hope it was informative or, or educational or entertaining or whatever you came here for. I hope maybe you can help me with my questions about, about the Sabrina dress. And if any of you have one of those photos that I'm going crazy trying to find on my computer, please send that. <laughs> if you've watched this whole video, you must be a big fan of Audrey Hepburn or Givenchy. And if that's the case, I would recommend you go check out my friend Henry Wilkinson's YouTube channel and Instagram because he is probably one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to Givenchy and and the dresses he made for Audrey. He owns um, one of Audrey's dresses made by Givenchy. I'm trying to think if there were if he owns two. Definitely one. Go follow him. Uh, I think he's got some interesting 
things planned for the future. I can't wait to see. His links will be down below in the description. And of course, I have to say thank you to Liz Dress because I can't, I can't believe I have this dress hanging in my closet. Uh, and I, I, this, I couldn't have done it uh, without them. If you are interested in recreation dresses, whether it's from a movie or a red carpet appearance or, or whatever, you can talk to them and go look through their Instagram, see what they've made and ask them if it's possible for them to help you uh, recreate your dream dress. So I think, I think that's about it. Probably forgetting to say something in here, but um, we're gonna wrap that up and I will leave you with just a, a nice little video I made while, while we were on the tennis court. So <laughs> enjoy, thank you, and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.